Well, something I don't see a lot of on YouTube is proper upkeep of a band mill. And obviously it's different for every mill you buy, every manufacturer, but I can go through you uh, through with you some of the ones on this mill. Now, I don't put the hours on this mill that like your professional your yeah, your professional sawyers would like uh you see Nathan from uh, out of the woods over there. I'll bet you he probably runs his constantly every day. So I'd imagine this would be a weekly thing for him, maybe more, I'm not sure. Everybody has a different way of doing things, but uh so anyway, let's go through some of the stuff on this. It's good, good as time as any to do it. We'll get to some milling, but this is kind of important stuff to cover too, especially if you guys are looking to buy something like this. Not a bad idea to know what you're getting into. Well, Hudson makes it real... Hudson makes it pretty simple on these. Like I said, I don't have a lot to go on for experience of other mills. I'm sure they're all just as simple, but... It's kind of something that attracted me to this mill and this brand. There's not a lot of bells and whistles, not a lot to go wrong with it. It's just, it's a good solid machine and it does its job. I can't really ask for anything more than that. You could do most of the maintenance on this with a 9 16 inch wrench, but um, so anyway, get these guards off here and I can show you what I'm talking about. A lot of you mention, uh, a lot of you want to know why I debark the logs. Why do I take the time to sit there and peel the bark off of those? I've answered that question so many times in the comments. And I'll continue when it gets asked. I'll, I'll continue to answer it, you know. But but I, I you got to debark those logs. They hold so much dirt. You can pressure wash those things. You can do what you know. You can do all kinds to to try to get away from debarking, and the pressure washing will get what's on the outside, but it's not going to get what has grown into the bark. Especially if you get a shaggy bark tree that's grown up in a sandy area, the wood carries a lot of dirt with it. You may not realize it, but it carries a lot of dirt. We were going to be doing some log milling today, but that's not going to happen because tire stem rotted off of the big tractor, and I cannot get my logs on the mill right now. There's a tube in that thing, so unfortunately I cannot replace the valve stem myself, which really sucks, because that means I have to hire somebody, which, if you guys can't tell, I don't like to hire anybody to do anything, but once in a while you just can't help it. But, I figured now would be as good a time as any to discuss band mills, discuss their maintenance and things like that, and maybe some simple operating things. Alright, first things first, let's discuss the bearings on these things. Now, this is a... Looks to be an inch and a half pillow block bearing, greasable. Now I want to show you guys uh, a little something. This is not a sealed bearing. Now it has a dust protector on it, on the bearing race. If I can get some of this old grease off of here. You guys can see that, that's up in here. Now it has that. But when it comes right down to it, this is not a sealed bearing. What does that mean? That means... That water's going to get in here, especially if you're like me and you have it in an unfinished building. So when it rains, it gets water. It's been outside since I've owned it. It fortunately won't be forever. But water's going to get in that. So I keep a regular grease maintenance on this thing, whether I'm using it or not. That being said, you can over-grease a pillow block bearing. And what will happen, you'll grease it so much that it cannot get rid of its heat and then you will really shorten the lifespan of the bearing. Now, a lot of people think more grease is better, but that's not always the case. Now, I work on a lot of industrial HVAC equipment. That's what I do for a living, for any of you guys who don't know that yet. And so I deal with a lot of bearings and stuff like that and manufacturers. And this right here is pretty much the kind of bearing I would see on most of the units I have that are belt driven. But Let's just get that out there a little bit more. So on these bearings, you're going to have a locking collar. You're going to have the bearing race. You're going to have a 
protection from dust in here. They may even call that a seal, a dust seal, but that does not prevent water from getting in. Behind that seal is where your bearings sit, and the rest is history. This is a replaceable item. Um, I'm not sure I can find out what the costs are if you guys are curious to know, but that's a very replaceable item. But I don't want to have to do it because they're not cheap, so we just kind of do it the way we're doing it now. But I'll grease these every couple weeks, especially this year because it's been so rainy. But like I said, keep in mind, you can over-grease these things. Now, let's keep going through. Now, one reason I bought this mill is because it has a very simple design. Not a lot of BS to it. There's no fancy bells or whistles. There's no computers. There's nothing like that. Now, if I was trying to do a production-type sawmill... Where I was trying to make a living from this, I would probably get something quite a bit fancier because this is a manual mill, and a manual mill is a lot more work than a lot of other stuff. But so you're going to have a few belts on this mill. You're going to have a drive belt, which we'll go over that and what to look for when things start to wear out. But you're also going to have a V belt that sits in here. This is a I believe this is a silicone based belt and this is why you don't use any petroleum products for your blade lube in the summertime because I'm milling pine right now and pitch dulls your blade it builds up it starts to heat the blade up and start heating these guys up so you got to run that blade lube but you got to be able to clean the pitch off so I run a pine saw and water mix in the summer and in the winter time I run windshield washer fluid right from the gas station and that uh, keeps it from freezing up. The only thing I don't like about that is ammonia and aluminum and magnesium do not mix. Ammonia will... If you guys ever seen a chainsaw that's been set, a magnesium body chainsaw that's been left on concrete, you pick it up, it's been there for a long time, and you see where the case halves are all pitted up and everything like that. A lot of times that is from the ammonia that is in the concrete. It just does not mix with white metals. So I'm kind of leery of running the washer fluid because my blade guides, there's a lot of aluminum in there, stuff like that, but I keep an eye on it. So anyway, this would be called a tire on the band mill. And what this does, like I said, it's just a V belt that fits inside this pulley. And what it does is it creates a crown right there for this blade to ride on. And that's how you... Uh, and that's how the blade rides. That gives you your grip. So if you're going to start, say you're, you've got this the proper tension and your blade starts slipping, things like that, you may have a problem with these tires. The other thing you want to look for, now I leave my blades on the mill, but when I'm done using them, you hear, you, you see that? When I'm done using them, I take the tension off of them every time. Because what happens is, we can even get it a little more. I probably didn't take it off enough that time. But. but anyway, what happens is if you don't take the tension off of that blade, you develop flat spots in this, and your blade's not going to run right on there. You're going to have a lot of problems, and you'll be replacing these. Is it a big deal to have to replace these? No, but why would you want to have to rip? Because remember, to replace these, I mean, look it over. This pulley has to come off of right here to be able to replace that because there's no other way to get it out. So that's not something I'm interested in having to do for a long time. But, so anyway, that's the pulley. So, I you don't worry about the wear inside this uh, V-groove on this pulley, because it's not like this belt is turning against that V-groove. It's just sitting down in there. So, I haven't heard of too many people wearing these pulleys out, but I will show you the pulleys that you will wear out. And if you have a ton of runtime on your mill, maybe something that you want to check. So remember, tension off the blade every night, no petroleum products. This is a metal blade lube tank right here. This cap. This cap has a little vent hole in it so you don't create a siphon in there. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Now I see a lot of people with the Hudson Mills, they end up putting a plastic tank on and I have noticed it myself. If you guys have seen some close-ups, and I'll, I'll get you one here to where the 
blade lube line is a nice rust color well the inside of that thing's gonna rust it's just your standard mild steel I will most likely be adding a plastic tank to this at some point in the future okay the blade guide now it doesn't matter what manufacturer you go with they all have slightly different blade, gla blade guides. And as you can tell, I do not clean this guide up the way that I should. And that's probably not very smart on my move. Now down here, where I'm digging around with this little... Yeah, I just told you not to get petroleum projects on stuff. And what am I doing? I'm wiping grease on the saw blade. That's pretty intelligent. Anyway... Right there, you got a roller bearing right there once in a while. You go through and make sure that's freed up. And that one is not. You get a lot of dirt and sawdust, and really what you're supposed to do after each day's use is blow that guy out. Now I'll be honest with you, if I have the proper tension on this blade, I very seldom have the blade actually riding on that. You could see a line where it does once in a while if you're pushing kind of hard on a cut. Well, it's not totally. See, I do not care for sealed bearings, but that bearing's so small, you're not going to really, uh, you're probably, oh, how do I put it? That bearing's small enough where you're probably not going to be able to ever grease that. But, yeah, I don't like that. Fortunately, I have some chainsaw bearings in my shop that may just fit that. That's a pretty common little bearing. Yeah, she's set right up. Damn it. Well, this is the kind of stuff when you're doing your maintenance you're going to find. Well, we've just had so much rain this year, and you guys see what kind of success I have keeping a tarp on anything. So, anyway... So this part right here would be aluminum. Inside this blade guide is steel. And that's the other thing. You guys see that little bit of rust on the blade right there? Now what I do before I fire this mill up and actually turn it on, and I learned it on the first blade I had and I actually broke it. What happens is when you leave this in here, it's going to rust a little bit in here. It's not going to want to move through there. So what I do, because I'm too lazy to take the blade off every night, after I tension this thing back up after a day of cutting, or when I go to use it again, put the tension back on it, I'll turn the uh, band wheels by hand until I get that rough spot cleared off. What happened, or not cleared off, at least freed up, what happened to me, the first blade I had, I had it on there for a week, and it rusted, it created a little bit of rust layer in there, so it didn't want to go through here very well. It put too much stress on it when I fired the mill up and it snapped that blade right at the weld. Fortunately, I, I keep all the guards on this thing when I'm running it because those things are, they're almost like a, <laughs> almost like a spring steel, you know, they're, I think they're a fairly hard steel. And they will kind of want to whip all over the place. No. So we got one issue right there I'm going to have to address. I could probably get it freed up, but that thing will probably, in all likelihood, that thing would just seize up again. But the mill's a couple of years old now. That's a, that's a wearable item. That's something you're going to want to expect you're going to have to replace once in a while. Okay, so we have our other pillow block bearing on this side. And here's the keeper that holds that, the locking collar. It holds that bearing on. Okay, so now let's see, can you guys even see it? Let's see if I can get you a little closer. Okay, so you have a set screw up here. Once in a while, put an Allen wrench on that thing, check it. Don't strip it out, don't go hog wild with it, but just check it over. Because when that thing strips out, set you back down here. If that thing, that uh, set screw backs out a little bit, and I see it a lot in the course of my work day, that'll back out a little bit. This will get loose on here, and it'll look like somebody put this thing on a metal lathe by the time it's all done. That will eat a hole right through there. 
usually not on here but in the uh, the bearing race itself will actually chew right through that shaft and then you're hunting a new shaft for this thing fortunately it's not very long it's not very complicated have another set screw there I don't see any uh, so we got the blade. It had the blade loose, that's why it sounds like it does. But that's that. Okay, here's a big maintenance issue I never hear talked of very much, but I think it's an important one, and the biggest reason I say that is because I see it during the course of my work day almost daily, especially on older equipment. This belt right here, this is a B belt, so it's uh it's a good size belt, you know, an A belt's kind of small. But this thing's going to ride in these grooves inside this big pulley here. And believe it or not, this belt right here is abrasive enough to where it does wear these pulleys out. If you're running your mills a lot, what you want to look, you want to check in there. You want to feel both sides of those grooves. Oh, moving the mill. You want to feel both sides of the grooves and you want to make sure that you're not eating into there at all. You want to feel for ridges. That wants to feel nice and smooth. And another indication that these pulleys could be going out on you is when you're inspecting your belts, look for wear on the sides of the belts. You know, if you got a, if that's all shined up really well and you could see the threads in, of the belt, I mean, the belt could just be worn out, but you want to check that pulley once in a while just to make sure you're not wearing in. If that thing's wearing in, keep in mind that if that groove starts to wear out it's not going to grip that belt very well you're going to lose a lot of power on your sawmill that's probably an expensive pulley but if it's bad and it's worn out it is a wearable item you got to remember that it's a wearable item you got to make sure you replace it the next one that gets checked on a regular basis would be the air filter i try to do this every three or four times i'm milling so what's going to happen if you have a plugged air filter on anything? You know, I don't expect everybody's a small engine or an engine guru. But what's going to happen is you upset that balance of airflow. You also want to look for insect cocoons and stuff this time of year. But I'm assuming that most of you already know what a, what a plugged air filter will do. But for people who don't know, what happens is, as you upset that fuel-air mixture, you're going to get a lot more raw fuel dumping in there. The engine's not going to run right. It's going to be like you're running the thing on choke all the time, which what the choke does, it closes down the venturi, so you're not bringing in so much air. It helps in kind of enriching the fuel in there, give it a little bit of a jump start. And if this air filter plugs, that's going to have the same effect. And what happens is you're going to start building up carbon in your piston rings. You're going to follow your plugs. And a followed plug would be the least of your problems if you don't keep this thing clean. The Hudson's design, or it's probably a Briggs and Scrap Iron design, because it, uh, it is a Briggs and Scrap Iron engine. Now this thing gets a lot of mill time. But, that's pretty clean. I keep it nice and clean. That's just foam they put on the outside. This I will wash in water and let it dry before I put back on. And this is just a standard paper filter. I like to take a lot of time to make sure this stuff's clean. The cleaner this is, the better this thing's going to run. That also goes along your common sense. Try not to use ethanol fuel in them, stuff like that, if you can help it. I'm lucky I have most of the gas stations around here now offer non-ethanol fuel. It only costs you an arm and a leg and a testicle more, but that's all right. But you will definitely know if that filter's plugged. Another thing I like to do, because I don't want it failing right in the middle of me trying to start it up and running, I like to check my recoil rope on this thing once in a while. I'll pull it out and look for frays. And I got a little bit on the outside, but I don't have any nasty spots. Now this engine actually has, for being a 
what it is it has a decent amount of compression on it but that's not too bad that's in good shape down there you can kind of see how long your pulse stroke is on this by where it starts to uh, fuzz up on the sides just rubbing through that metal collet there but that's a good thing to check once in a while and the other thing I see people do a lot they'll just yank from right there pull it out until you feel it com until you feel it engage and then pull it out when you when you just yank against that thing that's what really that destroys your recoils over time so you go until you feel that compression stroke, then you give it a good tug. Just don't let it go from there and slam it into that. It's horrible for it. Alright, at the end of a run cycle, if I know that I'm not going to be using this thing for a week or more, I'll turn the fuel off, I'll let the carburetor run dry. Pretty important, even with non-ethanol fuel, Here's something I bet a lot of people don't think about, and I never used to think about it until uh, the small engine repair guy said, you know, when you're buying non-ethanol fuel from the fuel pump, usually it's coming out of the same hose that your regular 87 is coming out of. So yeah, thinking about that, how much fuel does that hose actually hold? They're usually like a one inch or an inch and a quarter hose. And somebody may know the sizes better than I do, but they're usually one inch or inch and a quarter hose, and they're usually a good 8 to 12 feet long if you actually follow it up where it goes into the pump. That's quite a bit of ethanol fuel held in that hose. So when I had a gas truck before I bought a diesel, I would run the first couple gallons into the tank on my truck and then fill my gas can. So that's something to keep in mind. Non-ethanol fuel will keep a hell of a lot longer. It doesn't have the moisture. It's not hygroscopic. What hygroscopic is, it attracts moisture out of the air and it holds it there. It's very hard to get rid of it. That's the problem with ethanol. It's not that ethanol doesn't burn because it burns well. It's just it pulls moisture in. It eats rubber O-rings. It eats a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of things are manufactured nowadays to handle it, but I don't think they handle it very well not compared to not using it at all. So... So there you have it. There's some of the maintenance procedures I like to follow on my sawmill. Keep in mind, the better you take care of it, the better it's going to take care of you. It's just like anything else. Most of us wouldn't go uh, 12,000 miles on an oil chain, so why would anything else you're going to use do the same thing? But anyway, we're just keeping plugging along here. We're going to keep going. Tomorrow's supposed to be a beautiful day, so hopefully I can get a lot done tomorrow. But today was... Uh, Today was another one of those days where maybe I stayed up too late last night doing stuff and uh, <laughs> between that and the tractor and taking care of animals didn't get uh, didn't get a hell of a lot done today but of course it seems when you have a big family I have three kids and we all live all the in-laws we all live within a mile of each other a mile to two miles so it's a big family and there's always something going on and tonight is no different so no barn work tonight but at least I got some stuff done today but tomorrow tomorrow is mine I like Sundays Sundays is a good day for production here anyway guys thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it um, some of you have been asking me about Amazon links stuff like that how you can support the channel biggest way you can support this channel is just keep watching that helps me more than anything watch subscribe comment whatever you feel like doing if you guys are shopping amazon anyway i've started to put links to amazon a particular product in amazon in the description of all these videos but if you access amazon through that link and you don't buy that product which no skin off my back if you don't some of you ask where i get timber framing tools or where you can find them easy spot to throw them up there but if you guys go in there and you're doing some Christmas shopping or whatever already, you can uh, access Amazon through that link. And of course, I think you get like 4 to 6% of the sale. Doesn't cost you guys any more. It's up to you guys. I'm not an e-beggar, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to sit here and begging for your money. But the only reason I'm bringing it up and that I put them in there is that a few of you guys, a few folks have been asking about it. So... 
I decided why not we'll throw it in there it all helps get this thing done that's all that matters to me is getting this done and getting it set up once we're to that point but anyway guys have a good night I'll see you on tomorrow's video and hopefully it'll be a good production day take her easy